My name is Bram de Jonge. I do research on intellectual property rights and intellectual property protection in agriculture research in developing countries. Intellectual property rights actually are all sorts of rights uh, that you, as an inventor or a creator you can use to protect your uh, well, creations of, of, of the mind. As a researcher, if you, do, if you develop a new variety, then you use different uh, genetic traits, you, d you use different technologies to isolate genes or to, to put new genes in, in, in a variety, in an organism. Um, all these technologies, all these methodologies, all these materials can be subject to a patent. Here in front of us we see beans trying to find out what varieties grow best, perform best under certain circumstances. It could be possible that uh, this new variety contains 5, 10, 15 different intellectual property rights attached to the genetic material in these beans or to the methodologies, the, the methods, the technologies that are used to develop these beans. If as a researcher you try to develop these new, uh, new varieties of beans, you use uh, biotechnologies and genetic material from others and you are not certain, you do not know whether these technologies or this genetic material is potentially protected by intellectual property rights. I mean you need to be sure whether you can, whether you have a permission to use the genetic material that is involved. Biotechnology it can be very important also for poor farmers in developing countries because um, by biotechnology you can um, include a technology in a seed. If you want to improve food security in, in developing countries, if you want to fight hunger in developing countries, you have to do a lot of different things. And one of these things is making sure that farmers in these countries have access to improved varieties, varieties that grow uh, on their soils. So I think it's absolutely essential to take this technology on board in the fight against hunger. So the difficulties about the fact that there are so many intellectual property rights involved in this technology has to be taken into account when, uh, when, when investing in these kind of projects. As a researcher, for example, here in Wageningen, develop a new improved variety and at the moment that you want to sell your product to a company to take it to the field, um, at that moment you find out that you have been using patents of third parties of others in your new invention. Scientifically, this research is being advertised as a big success, but no product. You know, the farmers didn't receive anything. It's totally stupid, of course, to just go ahead with your research, put money on it, and then find out that you are not allowed to bring it to the market. The most important conclusion is actually the simple fact that we found out that intellectual property rights do affect uh, development projects. Because before that, there was no reflection on this topic at all. If there's no reflection on how you manage your intellectual property rights in any kind of project, but it's also especially development projects, there is a real danger that these rights can block access to improved varieties because it's simply too expensive to get access to all the technologies and materials that you need. What should happen? There should be much more use of what we call humanitarian licensing strategies. Strategies that you use as a, as a technology owner to make sure that if you sell your technology all the rights go to the new technology owner, all the exclusive rights for the commercial market. But you keep the rights and you make sure that the material can freely be used for humanitarian projects. Because if you don't do that, then also the non-commercial markets, the, 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 the humanitarian projects fall under the conditions of the commercial market. And then there is no money to, 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 to pay for that.